About 4.15. Let me check my diary. Sure. It's pretty packed. 4.15 and then we're going to be trying to get here and we'll be late. Yeah, we're following through. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Four, four or 4.15? 4.15. 4.15. Yeah, I'm going to be late. You think 4. Yeah. 3.30. <laughs> but you? I'm just going to say the same thing. 3.45 for you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> and you might be on time. All right, 30 seconds. All right. I, Mayor Mac Gerding, called the September 3rd, 2024 City Council meeting for the City of Summersworth to order. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Pepin. Here. Vincent? Here. Gibson? Here. Parody Cottonzaro? Here. Misho? Here. Witham? Here. Goodwin? Here. Cameron? Here. Austin? Here. All right. Councillor Goodwin will leave the Council in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Agenda item number three is the recognition of our indigenous people, our native ancestral Americans. This meeting takes place on Indikina, which is the unceded traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki, Penacook, and Wabanaki people, past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land, waterways, living beings, and the Alnabuk, the people who have stewarded Indikina throughout the generations. <coughs> item four on the agenda are any scheduled public hearings. We have two tonight. First up is a public hearing for Ordinance 3-25, which is to amend Chapter 13, <coughs> Police Offenses, Section 3.1, uh, Parking, uh, regarding leased parking spaces in the Downtown Business District, which, if approved, uh, would allow for the use of 44 spaces along Main Street by the <coughs> owner, owners of the property located at 85 Elm Street. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards Ordinance 3-25? Anyone who wishes to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing uh, for Ordinance 3-25 and open up the public hearing um, in regards to uh, Chapter 31, which is the Community Re Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive Program, Section 9, Termination of Covenant regarding the previously approved project on 25 High Street for David M. H. Baker, some downtown LLC. Is there anyone who wishes to speak towards this? Is there anyone who wishes to speak? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing for that as well. Brings us to agenda item five, which is comments by visitors. City Council and the Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at Council meetings. In accordance with Council Rules 7-C, a time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the Council wishes to suspend the rules. The Speaker shall not enter into a debate with any person, the Mayor, Council members, City Managers, or Department Heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Yes, come on up and please state your name and ward in which you live into the microphone. My name is Donald Young. I live in Berwick, Maine, and I'm here to inform and present gifts to several people here in the audience and to the city of Summersworth. Thank you. I've been asked to keep this brief and that's part of your rules. Very easy to do. I can reduce my comments to two words, Russia and pray. And <coughs> some people here will get that, and some people won't. But this is not a prayer meeting. I'm not an evangelist. It has nothing to do with uh, the current state of world affairs. Please consider 
Russia as a large landmass that extends from Eastern Europe to the Far East in the Pacific, over 7,000 miles, <coughs> practically one-third of the circumference of the Earth. And play? Play is a family game, and it relates to a young lad named Frederick Sandstone Play, who was born here in Somersworth, lived at Echo Farm out on the way to Rawlingsford. Well, I what we know as Nellie Farm, and now the Nellie Farm for Women. So what happened to this young lad was he ended up marrying a girl from where I live, Billick, Maine, Eleanor Lord Prey. And I'm sorry, but it's getting a little warm in here. So, Eleanor married Ted, and they went to work with his brother-in-law in Vladivostok. They arrived there in 1894. Uh, Eleanor spent 30 years there. Ted, as he was known, passed away there. Charlie, his brother-in-law, passed away first, then Ted. And their, uh, their two spouses, uh, they're all buried at Forest Grave Cemetery. So over the course of uh, the years 2015, 16, 17, and 18, as program chairman for Berwick Historical Society, I helped put on programs. And in 2015, a woman who is a, a professor emeritus of Russian culture at Washington State University arrived in Berwick with a film crew from Moscow and a crew from the uh, museum in uh, Vladivostok. We put on uh, a baked bean supper for them. Uh, the Lloyd House in Berwick is currently owned by Paul and Pat Beauvais, and they're the ones who disassembled the vine and put it back up again. Uh, and at a later meeting, uh, when Brigida was here, she brought some people from the museum and we attended a class at Maplewood School with, uh, which was Eric Monson's class. He can't be here tonight, but we have a book for him. And this t-shirt, was presented to him at a city council meeting shortly after that class. So I'm here to give out books to the, I've given one to the library already. I have one here for the Summers West Historical Society and Frank Kennedy and George Kuhlman, their president. Well, and Pastor Freeman, are you here? Oh, he's not. Well, there's the old Frank. There's the historical society. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, why do we have this book? Ellen Lord Frey wrote home over 2,000 letters, and they've been collected at the Library of Congress. <coughs> And the woman who wrote this book had previously written two other books about the writers and about the neighborhood over in Russia where they live. And now she's come out with a third one called Dear Folks at Home, which is how Eleanor Lord Prey, known as Roxy, started her letters. The final thing, the reason you have these gladiolas here, a company, you love up them, and the name of this strain is Vladivostok. I'm almost certain this is not the same gladiola as depicted on the back of my 
quite sure, but it's very close. So uh, I also dropped off two plant, uh, three other copies, one of which will go to Jane Holmes, one for uh, Max Stipple, and one for Eric Momsen. So with that, did I make the uh, five-minute deadline? So far, so good. I think okay, we're well, closing in on it. <laughs> I guess I'm done. <laughs> Thank you so much for fascinating oh. history and your donation to the library. Really the, appreciate uh, it. The city is welcome to have the, the uh, gladiolas. They're practically gone by now, but I do want the vase back. I'll come and get it. From <laughs> <laughs> we can make sure that happens. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, are, are there others who wish to speak tonight? Yes, come on up and state your name and the ward in which you live. I'm Donna Donovan. I live at 116 Indigo Hill Road, and I'm also the chairman of the Library of Trustees. And I'm just here to ask for your support tonight on resolution that you're going to vote on on 525 and 625 for the expansion of our library. We've worked really hard to make new programs down there. We're doing great things. and. I think it's our time. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, are there others who wish to speak tonight during public comment? Sure, yeah, come on up. We got two, two competing. <laughs> so thank you, yeah, and again, state your name and the ward in which you live. Hey, uh, everyone, my name's William Barden. I live in Ward 5. And uh, I was uh, delighted earlier this evening to receive a call from uh, David Witham on the council, um, <coughs> inviting me just to introduce myself uh, as uh, an applicant for an alternate position on the planning board, uh, which uh, appears to offer uh, just many different, uh, exciting different ways to uh, make a difference in this community, in which I've lived for about three and a half years now. Um, not much else to say, um, 36 years old, I, my occupation is as a uh, financial advisor, and I hope that I can bring at least some of my uh, organizational skills and some of the acumen gathered there uh, to, uh, to contribute in whatever small way I can. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, anyone else? And again, thank you so much. If you could state your name and the ward in which you live. Uh, Laura Berry, Ward 4. I just wanted to touch a little bit on something that this council did talk about last time, and it is on the agenda again tonight. I had a few people reach out to me about how we appoint people to the boards, and I know that this board is taking that under um, consideration and what the notices should be like. I'm ecstatic to find out that the HDC has someone tonight, so ecstatic about that. But um, some of the people who I've been in contact with since that council meeting have said it's very confusing and I think that the more sight we can give the public about what's available who we're looking to fill you know what can you do even if a board is full that you're interested in I think would be very helpful is some of the feedback I got so I just wanted to share that with everybody and make sure that it gets brought up in the agenda today thank you thank you all right is there anyone else who wishes to speak this evening Seeing none, we're going to move on to our next agenda item, which is agenda item six, uh, approval of the consent calendar. The chair will obtain a motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes the minutes of the city council meeting held on August 12th, 2024. Do I have a motion? Councilor Pepin? Make the motion as acceptive consent calendar as presented. Thanks so much. Councilor Pepin <coughs> moves the consent calendar be approved as presented, seconded by Councilor Cameron. A uh, question for the council is the adoption of the consent calendar. If you are in favor of the motion, you'll state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. Consent calendar is adopted. Brings us to agenda item seven, which is comments by city councilors. Are there any comments this evening by councilors? Yes, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, just a brief one. Thank you to everyone who came out and gave comment. I certainly will be supporting the resolutions on the library expansion. Thank you. Other comments by councilors? Councilor Witham. Yeah, same here. I support the, the, the whole moving forward of the library expansion project. I, I think that's uh, long overdue, so certainly in support of that. Um, and thank you to our gentleman that made the presentation with the gladiolas. And uh, as I was listening to the story, it seemed to start off with uh, a young man uh, meeting a young lady from Berwick and getting married. 
uh, I did that too, but I don't think my story is going to be nearly as exciting. <laughs> uh, thank you for coming. Thank you. Other comments by counselors this evening? All right, seeing none, we will jump to agenda item eight, which is communications. This evening we have two communications. Uh, first up is the letter of resignation from John Jackman, member of the trustees of the trust fund. City Clerk, can you please read the letter? John Jackman, 38 Fremont Street, Summersworth, New Hampshire. Dear Mayor Girding, I hope this letter finds you well. I am writing to formally resign from my position as a member of the trustee committee effective September 1st, 2024. <coughs> this decision was not made lightly. After careful consideration, I believe it is in the best interest of the committee and myself to step down at this time. I have not been able to make the last three committee meetings and I find myself not contributing to the committee. I want to express my sincere gratitude for the opportunity to serve on this committee. It has been an honor to work alongside such dedicated individuals as Steve Goff, Tammy Snedden, and Scott Smith. I am proud of the work we have accomplished together. I remain committed to supporting the committee's mission and the city's ongoing efforts in maintaining the best investment plan in long-term planning. <coughs> Please let me know how I can assist during this transition period. I will do my best to ensure a smooth handover of my responsibilities. Thank you again for the opportunity to contribute to our community in this capacity. I look forward to continuing to support the city in other ways in the future. Sincerely, John Jackman. Thank you so much, and thank you to Mr. Jackman for his service to our city. Um, our second communication is a communication from the city assessor, Mary Beth Walker of uh, Corcoran <coughs> Consulting Associates, Inc., regarding the results of our 2024 citywide reevaluation. Um, I invite Mary Beth to come up and present to our council. Thank you so much. Good evening, and thank you for having me here this evening. Uh, Mary Beth Walker from Corcoran Consulting. Um, I have presented a memo in your packet that outlines the revaluation. I just wanted to go through a couple of items first. Um, why did we do a revaluation this year might be a question that people are asking. And it is required by the state of New Hampshire law um, for us to do a revaluation at least once every five years. And we have not done one here in Summersworth since 2019. So the values that you have on your property record card and you have the values that you have been assessed for and taxed for up until this spring were all from the 2019 market. Um, and I really stress that because what we've done is we've revalued based on the 2024 market. And it has been a dramatic change from 2019. When we do a revaluation, we do not just select a percentage to bring all properties up by, so we don't go from 100,000 to 150,000. We have to take into consideration a lot of different information. So not everybody is going to change at the same percentage rate. Um, you, you and your neighbor could change at different percentages based on what type of property do you have, what is the location, what is the year, what is the condition. Uh, there are a lot of different factors that are taken into consideration. That being said, we have about 4,300 properties here in Summersworth. And um, when we do revaluation, we select a time period that we're going to use to um, for our sales. And um, the time period that we used is from April 1st of 2023 right through to just about the end of July. Through that, we found approximately 178 qualified sales. Those are arm's length transaction that we found were out on the open market. There wasn't any special circumstances that we know about surrounding the sale. Um, and those are the sales that we use. So it's kind of like a little snapshot in time that we're using to value, to place the new values. When the state of New Hampshire looks at our ratio and determines our median ratio, which we're hoping will be close to 100%, they're using a different set of sales. They will use from October 1st of 2023 right through to the end of September of 2024. So some of those sales haven't even happened yet um, that they will be using to measure 
our ratios. So there was uh, a 178 sales that we took into consideration, and we started at 54% of market value. So that means if you took the assessed value on your property prior to the reval, then and divided that by the sale price, we would have been at an overall median value of 54%. And we've brought that up to right around 99% of market value. Single-family homes, um, the average sale price is 420000 We were at 57% of market value, and again, we brought that up to about 99%. Mobile homes, there was 31 in our study. The average sale price of mobile homes right now is around 134000 <coughs> We started at 36% of market value and we've brought them up to about 98, 99% of market value. And they are the category that's going to be hit most as far as their assessment changes go. The multifamilies, the duplex and triplex, or two and three families, um, they went from 56% up to 98%. Condominiums from 62% to 99%. Our commercial properties, we had 10 available for us to use. The overall value shifted from six, uh, went from 68% of market value to 99%. Our vacant land went from 36% to 99%. And our apartment buildings <coughs> went from 52% to 99%. So what does that mean overall? <coughs> That means the single family homes will see an average increase in assessed value of 76%. Keep in mind that's the average and there is a range. The range is from 30% of an increase and some of the properties will double in value. So there is a range. The mobile homes on average increased 230%. And again, there's a range. Some of them will increase 150%, and some will increase 300%. So some of them will triple in value. The multifamily homes, there was an average increase of 70%, and the range is on the sheet. Apartments, there was an average increase of 86%. Commercial and industrial properties, there was an average increase of 61%. And again, that being said, some of them will only go up 5%, and some of them will go up 105%. And commercial really rely on what is the use of that property. And vacant land went up on average about 115%, but some of the land will only increase by 8 to 10%, and some will go up 300%. So these shifts are based on between the 2019 values and the, 2000, the 2024 values. We are ready to send out letters. We are preparing to print those out. And the next steps that we have are we will print the letters out. Everybody that um, has taxable property will receive a letter that will state what their new value is. They will have the opportunity to call into the assessing office and by appointment schedule to meet with one of our appraisers. So our Corcoran team will come in and we'll have set days for um, them to come in and go over their values, go over their property record cards. Some people are not familiar with what a property record card even looks like. Um, and then that's an opportunity to ask us to go over that with you. Sales will be available on the um, website for you to look at. What sales do we use to adjust your value? And um, the entire values, all of the values will be also available on the website. <coughs> we'll list them by owner, parcel number, and address so you can easily look and see as you're curious what other people may have had adjustments to their values. So that's pretty much Thank you so much. a lot, but it's all, it's pretty much it. I appreciate the presentation. It's very thorough. Um, are there questions from the City Council? We're going to start over here. Councilor Goodwin. 
<clears throat> Thank you for the clear presentation. I have a, a couple of questions. Um, Curious if, uh, thank you for breaking down the um, median ratio by property type. Do we have a weighted average of what the median ratio would be for all property? Just just give a sense of sort of how our overall assessment has changed. Um, yes, yeah, so are you talking about property type? All, all property types. So essentially what from, you know, 2019 assessment to the new assessment do we have a sort of a blended average of how how far um, the new assessments have benchmarked to across all property types? So that is on the bottom with the single family homes went up 76%. The mobile home and manufactured homes, so it's under the overall value of the city of Summersworth has increased by an estimate of 65%. And then I've broken down the different categories right under that. Oh, I see. All right. It's in the heading. There you go. Sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. Um, and how, how would you say that this 65% increase compares to um, other communities in our region and sort of historically to other assessments? I'm just, I, I'm new. I don't really know, you know, I uh, haven't sat, been through an assessment before. So uh, just curious on how. Is this significantly higher? Is this on track with historic growth and abutters? Um, just curious on your sort of general feedback on that. So I can speak to the proper the communities that I do assessments in. A lot of our communities will adjust their values every year or every other year, so it's a little difficult for me to gauge for the five-year mark. But the properties, uh, the communities that I did do a reassessment in last year that waited five years, this is right, this is very typical to have this type of shift. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Vincent. Thank you. Thanks a lot for taking my question. So I get the first thing that comes to my mind is why would we wait five years to make uh, this assessment? Um, um, because I think that if you waited and do it a shorter period of time, um, the hit wouldn't be so so drastic. You understand what I'm saying? Is there a certain is it, why are we waiting as a city? Is that a state thing, a city thing? What what is that? <clears throat> why do we wait five years? So historically, the city of Summersworth has done one every five years and it would be up to the city council to vote one in sooner. Thank you for that. I have one other question if I may. <clears throat> so these increases that you talk about, um, that's not gonna be the full increase. Are you talking about, is that, are these increases that you're talking about, like mobile homes, 150, are those gonna be, is that what the impact is gonna be, or is it gonna be half that? I think um, Councillor Goodman made a mention of this, and I wasn't paying attention, but is, is this what it's gonna be? If mobile homes, in your mind, are 150% more, is that what it's gonna be on, on the assessed value? Is that what that's going to happen? Is that what's going to happen? So mobile homes in particular are going to go up between 150% and 300%. Some of the mobile homes may triple in assessed value, yes. It is very important to note that the tax rate will go <coughs> down through this process. So the, a typical property is not necessarily going, they're not going to be paying the same tax rate. And one last question. Thank you for that. Um, Wow, it's like a bombshell you just dropped on me. And I think a few of the other people here, but I don't want to speak for that. Um, and I understand the whole process. I understand this assessing thing is a little bit of a game, and I apologize if I use game as the wrong wording. Um, because when the game is good, and we're all thriving in this great uh, way we're going right now with the economy, it's good. And what it does, it causes assessing to go up. So my question is going to be, when, the, when it tanks, have you ever seen in your business them come back out and go, oh, well, we're tanked now. We're going to come down 150% in your professional opinion. 
So right here in Summersworth, I've been here long enough to see that happen. At one point in time, I believe it was in 2014, we were at 110% of market value and had to bring the values down. So um, I have seen that happen, and yet <coughs> this, the city does need to address it at that time when it happens, and it has to be done at least once every five years. One more, please. Sorry. Thank you. So um, my final question, and I appreciate you you're sticking with me here. I appreciate that. Um, so if you make this assessment, you put this out to the city, us, and then we agree on it? Is it, or is what you say goes, or do we have a say? Um, I, as your assessor, who is your professional that you hire to do the reassessment, have given um, my best job forward to reassess the properties based on market value. And so that is the value that I've, I'm giving to the community. I don't know, and I would assume that the board would have to accept those numbers as they are at the moment with the understanding that they will change as we have the hearing process. People will bring forward information to us, we'll do further inspections, other things, so there will be <coughs> changes to that. Um, so probably point of order, someone else should speak to that. Um, I've never had anyone not go with my number, so. Um, thank you. Thank um, you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank it. you for, for my, taking my questions. Yeah, Appreciate thank you, Councilor Merced. Um, I'm gonna jump in and just reiterate to those watching at home and those here that um, the assessment number is not, like the increase is not the determined increase on your property taxes. I feel like there's a there's maybe a fear. I feel like I saw everybody get really like frozen. We're like, wait, yeah. you're meaning all my taxes are going to go up 230 percent? No, the city of Summersworth has already passed a budget with a set number, and we will then use the assessed value to collect property taxes to meet the number that we have already set. So we have set our budget, the number set. We already remember, y'all remember that? It was super fun, you guys loved it. Um, and so this assessment is just saying, how much is the value of property in Summersworth that we now have determined, and what rate do we need to set our tax rate at to be able to then accumulate the revenue to fund the budget that we already passed. I just want to make sure that's clear. I hope I'm right. Yes, city manager. Yeah, just to follow up on that, uh, Mayor. So the, the, the tax rate is set by the Department of Revenue Administration on October. And with the new value being higher, you can't use the tax rate that you just, you know, just the, the last tax bill you paid, don't use that rate because the rate will go down. Your assessment goes up, but the tax rate will go down. So that's, once we get the tax rate, then you can do the math and figure out what your tax bill will be in December. Uh, but that's not set till October. As far as the assessing process, there's standards, and, and not only state law, but there's standards that have to be followed. Hence, the state will look at all the numbers and validate that we did it to Corcoran Associates on behalf of the city, did it correctly, uh, and use proper seals and uh, uh, proper assessing methods. So it's it's in the hands of the professionals. It's in the hands of the, the DRA assessment standards and state law. As far as whether we should do it earlier, uh, maybe anecdotally it might be interesting if you responded, Mary Beth. Um, you know, in my my career, I've seen communities wait until DRA ordered uh, a revaluation. That happens on occasion when you, when, <clears throat> when the numbers are really skewed. So, but I think five is typically a standard, although some, some may do it sooner and some may do it later. Uh, you do several towns, is it usually around five in, in compliance with the state law or do you see it all over the place? Um, it varies. We have 15 communities that we do as a company and we have probably about a third of them I'll do it every five years and don't do it any sooner. I have some that do it every two to three years. Um, I do the commercial in Dover, and they do it every year just as part of their practice. They do revals every year. But, but it is a, a significant amount of money when you do it. So that's another reason why it's – and the market fluctuates so much. It's, it's, you're really rolling the dice to do it every two years or every year. 
but it can be done as, as Mary Beth explained by council directive. Okay. Council with him. <laughs> Thank you. I, I think the point has been highlighted already that I wanted to make, which is the association of uh, our assessed value and our tax rate. They are connected insofar as it generates a tax bill, but when your assessed value goes up, typically your tax rate comes down. And we have this conversation during our budget process because, you know, this year, for example, we were knocking at the door to $30 uh, per thousand, and everybody gets nervous about that $30 number, like it's some magical number. I, I, I'm not sure where this comes from, but it's a thing, right? And uh, this is evidence that by assessed value going up, tax rate's going to come down. And it, 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 Councilor Vincent calls it a game. It's just a, a, a feature of how we generate revenue for the city to fund our budget. So when we go through those arduous, arduous budget discussions, as the mayor said, it really should be about how much are we spending? Because at the end of the day, assessment, tax rate, it's to go towards what we're going to spend. Uh, I think the important thing is that the mayor highlighted here is people are going to get this reassessment and I don't know and here's the question Mary Beth sorry but is it is there a communication how the tax rate offsets what someone might pay or is it just simply your assessed value is going up so typically what we do is let them know that it's their their tax bill is going to change during a reevaluation if you keep in mind that there's an average that the assessed values went up if you if your assessment goes up less than that average you will probably end up paying less taxes in the end than you are right now but if your assessment goes up more than that average for your property type um, then you may end up paying more. Um, and typically, it would be finance that would figure out the best estimate of what the tax rate might do. And then if the city would like that as part of our conversation or they would like to let people know that the tax rate's going down by a certain amount or estimated certain amount, that would be up to you folks to let them, let them and us know that so we could communicate that. Right. My knee-jerk reaction is that we ought to think about some sort of communication to accompany this. Otherwise, uh, I think people, they're not going to connect one with the other because they don't live in the world that we live in and could cause some concern. I forget where it was in New Hampshire that recently happened. And it, it caused a high-speed wobble in the community that they had to kind of get under control. So messaging, I think, is important. And I'm not the one to craft that, but I'm sure that somebody here can. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Gibson, you are next. Okay, um, I have two questions. Um, if I remember correctly from your um, <coughs> briefing, you said that um, the assessment on commercial property had only gone up approximately 100%. The commercial properties have gone up on it's down on the bottom commercial industrial properties have increased an average of 61% but there's a range some of them will go up 5% some will go up to 105% it all depends on what type of commercial property it is and what it's what the property is being used for um, the same way as in residential properties it depends on what type of home you have uh, it could be style, it could be square foot, age, et cetera. So there's a lot of different factors <coughs> that are involved. The okay. um, reason I ask is that as a, a comparison, mobile homes versus commercial property, you're looking at um, up to a 300% increase in assessed value. I'm wondering why it seems like certain categories didn't have the same types of jumps that others did. Because the 2019 market was very different than it is right now. And that's what we had for assessments before was the 2019 market. That's what we were using. Now we're using the 2024 market. The value is very different. If you think about it, when I go to buy a home, what can I afford? 
and what's available out on the market as far as residential properties go might be the smaller, less pri the lesser priced homes that's going to drive those up in value faster than, say, a colonial, which may already be higher and in price. And, it, and so you have people trying to buy homes. They're going to get into summer's worth to live here by buying the less expensive properties, which would be your mobile homes, your smaller capes, your smaller ranches. That drives those values up more and faster than the colonial. When it comes to commercial, it is um, what can you lease that property for? It's not their business value, but what can you lease that? What can you lease per square foot that property for? What is it valued at? And the market for commercial properties has definitely not gone up as fast as the residential properties. Thank you. Other. Questions or comments from council? Yes, Councillor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, thank you, um, and this has been super helpful. I wonder um, in the communication, the letters that go out. Um, so first, let me repeat what I've heard to see if I got it correctly. The um, whether or not the bill at the end of this goes up or down is your relation to the average percentage for that category. Is that correct? So if the average percentage is 76% and your value your value uh, is 60%, then your tax bill is probably going to go down versus if you are higher than the average percentage in your category. Is that right? It will be more relation, it, it will be more compared to what the overall value of the community has gone up. So the overall value of the community has seen an increase of 65%. Okay, got it. Um, will that uh, relationship be noted in the letter? Like the overall community has gone up 65%. Here's where your property lies. And if we, not, maybe that's something that we could we think of in our own communication. We don't add a lot of information to the letter. The letter is very simple. It says we've performed a revaluation, and here are your new values. It states um, it does not include any exemptions or credits that you may have applied to your taxes, and this does not not this does not reflect what the new tax rate will be, or some similar to that language. We find the more complex it gets, the more confusing it is for people. And on top of that, they stop reading at some point, and it's usually after they see their value. Mm -hmm. um, we direct them to where the sales can be found and a, and a phone number to call us. It's easier to explain to people, even if it's 4,000 people, which it won't be, um, that exactly what I've explained tonight than it is to try to get into a letter and then refer them back to the letter. Um, most people aren't going to read all of that information or it will be quite confusing to them because they're not familiar with the subject. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Yes, Councilor Goodwin. Sorry, one, one follow-up question and my math skills are, are not great in this regard, but to restate um, a, a question I had earlier, our overall tax base has increased by 65%. So we have a much larger pool of value to, to tax. So the rate is going to fall. It's not going to fall. I mean, theoretically, it's not going to fall by 65%, is it, the rate? Like, how does, how does the percent increase in value relate to how the rate will drop? And obviously, there's specific math that will occur at the state level. But just in general, how do those two correlate? So tax rate setting is very complex. It does not just include your assessments. There's other revenues that come in, um, exemptions, credits are considered, and then what your expenditures are. So that really is not my expertise. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you so, so much. This was extremely informative. Really appreciate it. So thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, that will move us to agenda item nine, which is presentations of petitions or disposal thereof by reference or otherwise. We do not have any tonight, which brings us to 10, which is the mayor's report. Um, 
I just wanted to first give a final reminder to folks that there is a state primary and special election next Tuesday, September 10th. Uh, this election will determine state level candidates for the general election, which will be held in November. Um, and we'll also elect new members uh, to the open seats of Ward 5 School Board, Ward 3 School Board, and City Council at large. Uh, I certainly encourage all residents to make the time to turn out and vote in what is both an important election for the city and for uh, the state. Um, secondly, I'd like to reflect upon the anniversary of a lost officer from the city here. I have a letter from our chief of police that I'd like to read. It's in, mem uh, excuse me, in memoriam um, on September 4th, uh, 1979, at approximately 4.54, a member of the Summersworth Police Department attempted to stop a vehicle that was reported stolen out of the city of Dover. Uh, the short pursuit through Summersworth and Dover ended tragically near the intersection of High Street and Pinecrest Drive, which is now Crest Drive, here in Summersworth. Uh, the operator of the ve uh, suspect vehicle, a 16-year-old juvenile, had crashed into police officer Kowalski's cruiser, which was pulling out into the roadway in an attempt to intercept the suspect vehicle and put an end to the pursuit. As a direct result of the crash, uh, police officer Kowalski uh, succumbed to his wounds and was pronounced dead at Wentworth Douglas Hospital a short time later. Officer Kowalski was 25 years old and had only been uh, with the agency for four months. Um, our thoughts and prayers will always go out to Officer Kowalski and his family. Uh, may he rest in peace. And I ask that we uh, do a brief moment of silence tonight uh, for him. Thank you. All right. Uh, lastly, this evening, um, I have a few guests. Um, I believe Laura Griffith, unfortunately, was not able to make it tonight, but I heard she had a guest who was also in attendance. Please, if you wouldn't mind coming on up to the podium um, and introducing yourself to the council, that would be great. Um, good evening. I'm um, Diane Griffith, and I live at um, 52 Grove Street, and I am Isabella Griffith Hansen's grandmother. Great. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. Isabella Griffith Hansen um, and their family um, uh, hopefully uh, are watching as well tonight. I know some of them are young, so I might be in bed. <laughs> but I just wanted to thank you for being here this evening. Um, Izzy uh, is a survivor of acute uh, lymphoblastic leukemia. Uh, which is one of the most common forms of pediatric cancer for children aged three to five. Um, diagnosed uh, when she was only three years old, she and her family battled this aggressive form of cancer uh, for a little over two years uh, with five different uh, chemotherapy drugs and steroids. Um, it was a grueling process uh, for a three-year-old to go through, as I'm sure you can all imagine, um, and uh, it was equally difficult for her family to witness. Uh, Izzy needed uh, over 100 blood and platelet transfusions and spent over a year at Boston Tr uh, Children's Hospital for va various illnesses. Uh, during this time, uh, she lost walking function for months and uh, became severely immunocompromised, um, which uh, ended up uh, causing her to have a number of various illnesses uh, on top of the cancer, uh, many of which would be you know, normal for a healthy uh, person to be able to handle, but if you're a, a child trying to fight it off, it could have caused her to lose her life. Uh, thankfully, they did not. Um, but I, I wanna say, thankfully, Izzy has completed all of her treatments and is in full remission, uh, thanks to the amazing care of her family and the treatment of the hospitals, both Dana-Farber and Boston Children's. Um, though there were many days that Izzy and her family may have you know, been petrified and scared of what the future might bring, um, Izzy ended up out on top. Um, and her, hap her family is very happy to report that she started school and is thriving. Um, so for those who are not aware, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Um, and is Izzy's grandmother uh, and her family, her uh, Izzy's grandmother's daughter, Laura, who's Izzy's mom, reached out to me uh, just over the past few weeks to see if there's anything we could do here in the city uh, to help raise awareness for those uh, who are suffering uh, from these awful types of cancer um, and whose families are affected by this. Um, so in recognition of this month, 
I have planned uh, two ways for us to acknowledge Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. I've uh, brought forward a resolution that you might have seen tonight uh, that will include the Childhood Cancer Awareness flag to the list of flags that are displayed at Citizens Place. So uh, it's in your packet, it's resolution 1225. Uh, and I certainly respectfully ask that the council waive council rules tonight to allow for a second reading for this resolution so that hopefully we can pass it. Uh, the second thing that I brought forward is a city proclamation uh, that proclaims September as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month here in the city. Uh, and I will read the proclamation and I'll present it to you if that's all right. <laughs> so if you don't mind coming up again, I'm sorry to make you go up and down. Um, so um, proclaiming, uh, proclamation proclaiming September 2024 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Summersworth. Uh, whereas for 14 years, uh, September has been officially designated as National Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, uh, which has encouraged Americans throughout the nation to honor the children who have battled this group of diseases. And whereas childhood cancer remains the leading cause of death by disease for children under the age of 14. And whereas met, uh, more awareness should be raised about not only the prevalence of this group of diseases, but also the hardship faced by children battling cancer, uh, the survivors who may face chronic health challenges, uh, the sons, daughters, siblings, uh, family members, and friends whose lives uh, were lost far too long, or too young, excuse me, uh, the families who are impacted by ke uh, pediatric cancer, and the healthcare providers who work tirelessly to treat and cure these children. Uh, and whereas many of the causes of this group of cancers remain unknown, uh, meaning more research, work, and focus on these diseases is needed in order to someday better understand and treat them, and whereas Summersworth and the families that live here have been severely impacted by these diseases. Now, therefore, I, Matt Girding, Mayor of the City of Summersworth, New Hampshire, on behalf of the City of uh, Summersworth City Council, do hereby proclaim September 2024 Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Summersworth and encourage all citizens to acknowledge every day, uh, but especially in September, the prevalence and impact of childhood cancers on the families within our communities. So thank you, I'm gonna come, come on back. Thank you so very much. Here. Well, thank you. I so appreciate it. Ooh, thank you. Oh, for, excuse here's me. No worries. I'm sorry. That's totally right. And this is for you all for to keep and have. I appreciate and, it. And I'm sorry Laura couldn't be here. She had to work. It's totally yeah. okay. I understand yeah. how that is. She reached out and yes. let me know. So yeah. I'm thank you. glad you're here. Thank, thank you. you very much. This is great. Say hi thank to Izzy you. for us. Too. I will. I will. I'm going home okay. back there to babysit now. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you again. Um, so yeah, um, if anyone at home or here tonight is looking to do more to help uh, raise awareness or donate or volunteer or celebrate uh, the warriors that have, uh, have to go through this difficult journey, uh, please take a look at some of the following foundations that are uh, local to our area. There's retsroots.org, which is R-E-T-T-S, and then roots, or excuse me, roost, R-O-O-S-T. Dot org. Uh, there's cadencecrusaders.org, uh, which is C A I D E N S, and then crusaders.org. Uh, Lucy's Love Bus.org, and then Cops for Kids with Cancer.org. All those uh, are more local and directly help the families here in Summers Earth who are struggling with some of these uh, difficult uh, diseases. So. That respectfully concludes my mayor's report this evening. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is item 11, which is reports of standing committees. Uh, first up, we have the Finance Committee, uh, Chairman Witham. No report tonight. Thank you so much. Next up, we have Government Operations Committee, Chairman Mishu. And we have not met your honor, but we're planning on a scheduling meeting for next week. That's great. Thank you so much. Next is Economic Development Committee, Chairman Goodwin. No report, your honor. Thank you. Next is Public Safety Committee, Chairman Pepin. I have no report this evening. Thank you. Next is Public Works and the Environment Committee, Chairman Witham. And I have a report. Uh, we met this evening at 5 p.m. just prior to this meeting. Uh, all members were in attendance. Uh, our first agenda item was a discussion with uh, two representatives, the town manager and town planner from Berwick, Maine. Uh, they've uh, reached out to us to engage the city of Summersworth in a conversation again 
about an emergency interconnect of water line from Summersworth to Berwick. Uh, by way of background, uh, this issue was raised uh, back when we reconstructed the so-called Berwick Summersworth Bridge uh, in the reconstruction of our downtown, uh, boy, some 10 years plus ago now. Uh, at that point in time, uh, Berwick officials, for reasons that are not clear right now, uh, other than financial, uh, decided not to proceed with an interconnect at that time. It seems as though the issue has come up in conversation, uh, loose conversation, over the years, but is more meaningful now. Apparently, Burroughs has access to some grant monies to fund an engineering study of what that interconnect might look like, whether or not it would be at the bridge again or whether there would be some other location, uh, what that interconnection might entail. Uh, Public Works and Environment Committee, uh, in some total, thought it would be in the right thing to do to look at an interconnect with Berwick. Uh, if not for our benefit, certainly for theirs. Uh, it seems as though the benefit would certainly be for Berwick and less for us, where we have the emergency interconnect with uh, the city of Dover currently. Uh, so any of this engineering study and uh, such, uh, we thought uh, is certainly appropriate. Uh, and uh, but would be funded by the town of Berwick maybe through this grant uh, money. Uh, that would look at capacity, location, estimates of cost, those sorts of things, uh, and then it would take further action thereafter. Uh, the committee certainly was in favor of supporting this, but we thought that this was more of a full council decision, so we will tee it up for an agenda item at our next meeting, uh, probably a vote under other Your Honor, uh, to proceed with this. Uh, the Burke town manager indicated that he would likely attend that meeting uh, so that if other counselors had questions at that time, we could ask them. Uh, but uh, we want to continue to move the ball forward, so we look forward to adding it on the next agenda. Uh, Without if, objection. If, if there's no objection to that. Thank you. We got an update from our city engineer and public works director on the complete streets project that's underway on Constitutional Way. Uh, Sewer line is in, uh, the water line is in. Uh, water line still needs some testing and such, but is ready for activation pretty soon. Uh, and work is underway with the drainage lines underneath the street. Uh, that has hit a bit of a snag. Uh, there are communications conduits, if you will, that were not known to anybody until they unearthed them. Uh, these are very old. Some of them are actually like wooden trees that they've put telecommunications lines through. For lack of a better way to describe it, they're wood. Uh, uh, we cannot move them. They're too delicate, expensive to move. So we now need to work around them with some of the drainage structures. Uh, so uh, uh, change order is being developed for this. Uh, it looks like the relocation of a couple of catch basins, so it's not like oh my God, change order, but would be a change order. Uh, the engineering is, is largely done associated with that. That'll be provided to Grenice for the change order cost uh, so that we can proceed. We do have a $100,000 contingency line for the project. We have used none of that uh, to date, uh, so we feel very comfortable that we can operate within the confines of the contingency line of the budget for that project. The other thing that required some decisions uh, were on street trees. Uh, there are a number of trees that line the easterly side of the street, uh, many of which are not in the public right of way but immediately adjacent to it. Uh, they are owned either by the American Legion or by Citizens Bank. Uh, we have been in community, we the city staff have been in communication with both those property owners and they're in agreement for replacing some of those trees with a more modern tree variety. As you might well imagine, when you're digging so close to those trees, you're, you're impacting the root structure and things of that nature. Some of the trees are already in a failing state, and this would just make them fail. So we're going to replace the trees uh, with a series of red maples and other ornamental trees along that corridor. Uh, and all the property owners are in agreement, so we're moving forward with that along that uh, street uh, in terms of the, the trees. So uh, there won't be a net gain or loss of trees, just a replacing of trees uh, that we'll see mature over time. Uh, 
The other piece that we took up as a separate agenda item but is related uh, was <coughs> the uh, change order that we're looking to do with regard to the crosswalk uh, adding at the end of a Constitutional Way and High Street. Basically, the northerly crosswalk, which doesn't exist right now, uh, uh, in putting that in. We had a decision to make with regard to the direction of the crosswalk. One was uh, perpendicular to High Street and the other was sort of diagonal. Uh, the perpendicular crosswalk, although shorter, uh, would require a lot more work on the easterly side of High Street with a back curb and some other uh, features. It also had some sight line concerns from Constitutional Way. Long and short, the committee supported the diagonal crosswalk. Uh, it's far less uh, obtrusive, requires no work on the westerly side. Uh, a little bit of a curb bump out, which will help with traffic calming on the easterly side. Uh, much better pedestrian line of sight and achieves the overall mission. The only negativity is that the crosswalk is going to be a bit longer in this direction, but uh, uh, kind of aligns with the crosswalk on the other side of the street. So we weren't terribly alarmed by the length of crosswalk. It's supported by our staff and certainly supported by uh, the engineer, uh, project engineer for Constitutional Way. So uh, we kind of green lighted that design model so that this project can continue to move forward. City staff brought us up to speed on a asphalt hot box. There is a hot box uh, request in, from Public Works in our capital improvements plan at about $30,000. Uh, however, a used uh, hot box is made available by one of our vendors uh, for $5,000. It's been used for uh, less than one year. It's in a very serviceable condition uh, and is a slide-in type unit. Uh, for those that are wondering what a hot box is, this allows us to keep uh, hot top uh, at a temperature uh, appropriate for application uh, throughout the day. So our crews can pick up the hot top uh, at a local plant and this keeps it available and warm throughout the day so that the patchwork that is done either on a sidewalk or a road uh, is a much more, is a higher quality product than uh, the, the so-called coal patch that we might have to use right now. So. The city has wanted one of these for quite some time. Uh, getting a used one right now removes it from the CIP. It's, it saves us probably about $25,000. So we're, we've uh, green-lighted that. It's within the city manager's spending authority. So we look to be purchasing that uh, in the coming weeks. We had an update on a number of different projects from the Public Works Director Babinski and City Engineer Hall. Uh, a couple that I'll just comment on. Uh, we know that we've... Uh, pun intended, green lighted the upgrade of the signal at uh, Indigo Hill Road, uh, Blackwater Road and High Street to allow for left turn uh, management of Indigo Hill Road and Blackwater Road. That project is still continuing. That project looks to be completed this fall. Um, the engineering is done, equipment is being ordered. So that's, that's all progressing. It just takes longer than you think. Uh, We've also talked about repairs of about 18 to 20 manholes between uh, that same intersection and the intersection with Stackpole Road. Uh, actually, I, I think it backs up all the way to South Street. There are a number of failing manholes. They've settled and they're loose and you can see traffic dodging them as they drive that corridor. Uh, Grenice and Son has agreed to do the work. Uh, they're working on the price estimate that should be available for us Friday so that we can proceed with that work. It'll probably be done by a Grenice subcontractor, but we are looking to have that work done before, uh, before snowfall. So we'll say Thanksgiving-ish. So uh, we're, we're fairly confident with that. So, um, and also for the public's uh, knowledge, because there's been a lot of uh, chatter about uh, traffic flow on High Street in the area of Walmart and Target. The traffic signal for the Target entrance, uh, the camera went bad that sits above that intersection. And what does the camera look like? If you look above our intersections now, there's like a, a device that looks a little bit like a bell, for lack of a better way to describe it. That is the intersection camera, and it detects traffic at the various stop points. That camera went bad. It's been shipped back to the manufacturer and it's just taking forever to get it repaired or replaced. 
Uh, we are confident that that will happen within the coming week or two uh, and get that intersection back online. When the camera goes bad, the signal goes into a default mode, which is basically a timer, right? So it could turn the signal green for target at 2 in the morning, even though there isn't a car in sight. It doesn't know. The, the, the signals become dumb, if you will. So we got to get the camera back, and then we'll synchronize all the lights again and get traffic flowing. I know it's an aggravation. It aggravates me. It aggravates lots of people. We get it. It's on the radar. It's being fixed. It just takes longer than you think. So we had a number of miscellaneous conversations, but that, in essence, sums up the committee. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Recreation Committee. Chairwoman. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. I didn't see you. Go ahead, Councilor Gibson. <clears throat> sorry. Um, I just blanked. Uh, you lied. Caused you to lose it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. All right. If you think of it, flag me down. <laughs> um, next is Recreation Committee Chairwoman Cameron. Oh, was no, back. Oh All right. Thank you so much. Uh, next is agenda item 12, reports of special committees. Are there any reports of special committees tonight? Yes. Uh, Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Yes, thank you. Um, just an update from the most recent Coast bus um, meeting that I attended. I don't have the minutes from that yet, um, but as Summersworth was brought up, I just wanted to flag it as soon as possible for folks. Um, you may remember back to when we were discussing the budget and, you know, that uh, bucket of nonprofits that we look at. Um, Coast's uh, bill or ask, for lack of a better word, this year had significantly increased, and we did increase what we uh, put in our budget, but we only increased by about $10,000. Um, so, what we are contributing to Coast, which is a 501c3 nonprofit, uh, this year is actually a smaller percentage of what they asked us for, which is determined by a lot of things, including ridership. Um, it's significantly lower than the percentage of what uh, we funded them for last year. So there's nothing um, happening just yet, but discussions are occurring as to how they're going to deal with that. Um, some potential options that were discussed is uh, changing the frequency, so reducing the frequency from one hour to two hours. Uh, for the bus, and that, of course, would impact a lot of Summersworth folks that ride the bus. Um, so there is uh, a possibility that we will be hearing from them either uh, giving us some options to either bring our funding up, uh, do some sort of supplemental appropriation to fund it more, or a potential change in service. So um, I'm not sure which committee that should be, but perhaps we invite rad from coast to come and talk to said committee to talk about potential solutions thank you i feel like if it's a finance thing it might yeah. be finance committee yeah. yes uh, we'll we'll send it over when it when they approach us so thank you Great. for the update thank you yeah. um other reports of special committees yes Councilor goodwin thank you your honor um uh the eyes on 30 committee uh met on august 19th um this was a continuation of the prior uh, discussions we've had in terms of reviewing and structuring priorities. Um, and uh, we devised a, <clears throat> a strategy moving forward of picking one subject matter per month um, and workshopping the sub tasks and goals under each one of those um, to provide a structure for us moving forward um, and to make it deliverable for uh, the council. Um, we also uh, are looking to have a joint workshop with the mayor's housing task force to assess an opportunity to work together uh, on a shared uh, interest for um, a community mapping exercise to better understand um, from the community how to identify different neighborhoods in the city and um, and the various sort of uh, cultural um, uh, touch points therein, uh, so asset and asset mapping exercise essentially. Um, and we, and I think that's it actually. All right, thanks. Thank you so much. Other reports of special committees? Okay, 
Seeing none, I will turn it over to the city manager to deliver his manager's report. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, for the following comments that were included in my written report to council. Under unfinished business, I just point out under resolution 525, um, although we received email notification that we re uh, were uh, getting the grant from HUD regarding the accessibility improvements and expansions at the public library, we actually uh, received the grant award letter and that was included in your packet uh, to review. Under new business, Ordinance 425 and Ordinance 525 and Resolution 1025 are all related to providing funding for the Home for Now shelter request. Um, I did provide you with a copy of uh, Betsy uh, Andrews Parker's request for funding uh, that was sent to the mayor and myself. And that was provided to the Finance Committee who met on August 7th and voted to recommend uh, the council taking action to fund this request uh, under uh, ordinance 425 and 525 um, would recommend a public hearing be scheduled at the next regular council meeting on September 16th at 7 p.m. Without objection. Thank you, Your Honor. And under 525, as you'll see in the uh, ordinance, it does require that one actually requires not only a public hearing but by city charter but a two-thirds majority vote of council in order for it to pass. Under resolution 1125 regarding authorizing the manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety for a Traffic Enforcement Patrols Grant, I provided in your packet copies of the grant application and grant agreement and the city's match would come from the police department's fiscal year 25 operating budget and it provides extra uh, patrol, overtime patrol, uh, to our department so officers can um, look for distracted drivers, um, impaired drivers, um, pedestrian safety, and, and those sorts of things. Under, um, under Resolution 1225 is in regards to the cancer awareness flag, and uh, although it's the intent to get it up immediately, we, it won't be arrived till sometime probably next week, so we'll get it up once we it arrives, should this uh, pass. Under other, the council vote to grant an extension through November 30th, 2025 for the previously approved city ordinance, chapter 31, community revitalization tax relief incentive program for 142 and 144 High Street for Jeffrey Hughes, the finance committee met and uh, voted to recommend to the full council this extension through November 30th of 2025. Mr. Hughes was present at the meeting and, and uh, answered questions for the Finance Committee and um, he thought the new timeline would work for him to be able to complete his project and renovations. The next vote to terminate um, the Tax Relief Incentive Program for David Baker at 25 High Street. Again, it was taken up by the Finance Committee and I did talk to Mr. Baker, and he is in the process of trying to sell that property. So we didn't object to any revocation because there'll be, in all likelihood, a new owner. But should that any sale fall through and he continue to uh, hold on to it moving forward, he would just uh, reapply for your consideration. And under a couple of quick informational items, Your Honor, members of council, um, the school board ward for vacancy, we haven't received any applications to fill that seat yet. Um, and just a note reminding the council that on our next meeting, which is September 16th, it's a Monday, we'll meet at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll be scheduling a workshop required by the New Hampshire uh, Department of Environmental Services grant to go over the sewer assessment management plan. And that will be presented by Jeff Mercer uh, engineer out of Wright Pierce Engineering. And thank you, Your Honor. That includes my uh, comments. Thank you. All right, brings us to uh, item 13, which is nominations, appointments, and elections. Under nominations, appointments, and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, the following are being brought forward for nomination tonight. Uh, first is Ryan Powers for appointment to the Historic District as an alternate member with a term of three years. Next is Melinda J. Hanna for appointment as Ward 2 moderator with the term to expire at the conclusion of the next municipal election, which is November 2025. 
Um, and then Billy Butler for appointment as Ward 2 Selectman with a term to expire at the conclusion of the next municipal election in November uh, 2025. Councillor Austin. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to waive council rules to consider the nominations for Melinda, Hannah, and Billy Butler this evening. Thank you. Councillor Austin asks to suspend council rules to vote on both Melinda Hanna and Bill Butler this evening, seconded by Councillor Witham. Question for the council is to suspend rules to vote on both uh, Melinda Hanna and Billy Butler this evening. Discussion? All right. Seeing as there is none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it. Council rules are so far suspended. Um, so with rules suspended, we'll have a second reading on Melinda Hanna and Billy Butler. Again, I guess we don't technically have to read a second time, but I'll do it anyway. Melinda Hanna's up for appointment as board two moderator with the term to expire at the conclusion of the next municipal election. And Billy Butler is for appointment to ward two selectmen with a term to expire at the conclusion of the next municipal election. Uh, what are the wishes of the council? Councilor Witham. Move that both nominees be approved. Councilor Witham moves to approve the, uh, both Melinda Hanna and Billy Butler, seconded by Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Uh, again, question for the council is on the confirmation of Melinda Hanna and Billy Butler. Discussion? Seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you're opposed, you'll state by saying no. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. All right, eyes appear to have it, eyes have it, and Melinda Hanna and Billy Butler have so far been appointed and confirmed. Thank you. Um, also tonight, uh, we have under nominations, appointments and elections, in accordance with Council Rule 17 appointments, we have uh, one member being brought forward for a vote as well tonight. Uh, this is William Barden for appointment as an alternate member of the Planning Board with a term to expire in three years. What are the wishes of the Council? Council with them. Move to approve the nominee. Council with Thank you. Councilor Witham moves to approve the nominee, seconded by Councilor Vincent. The question before the council is on the confirmation of William Barden. Uh, discussion? Yes, Councilor Witham. Thank you. Uh, thank you, William, for coming tonight and uh, getting up to the podium and introducing yourself um, is one that caused the resolution that looks to maybe require that to go back to committee. Uh, I felt that at least to give it a shot, so I applaud you for coming here and giving it a shot. I think it does add value to the nominee uh, to put a face with the name uh, and to uh, understand a little bit more about you. I enjoyed the brief phone conversation. Uh, I do sit as the council rep to the planning board, so I look forward to seeing you in chambers here uh, should this vote pass, which I think it will. Thank you. Other discussion? All right. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the motion, please state by saying aye. If you are opposed, you'll state by saying no. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Ayes appear to have it. Ayes have it. And our nominee has been uh, confirmed. Um, I also just want to do a shout out for Ryan Powers, who is up for nomination, but not officially uh, uh, for his confirmation. That will be at our next meeting. Thank you, though, for also being here in attendance tonight. Um, our next meeting is September 16th just for his knowledge. All right, that brings us to item 14, which is items that have been laid upon the table. We have none tonight. Also brings us to now item 15, which is unfinished business. First up, uh, we have ordinances. Uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on ordinance 3-25, which is to amend chapter 13, police offenses, section 3.1, parking regarding leased parking spaces in the downtown business district which, if approved, would allow for the use of 44 spaces along Main Street by the owners of the property located on 85 Elm Street. City Clerk. Ordinance number 325, to amend Chapter 13, Police Offenses, Section 3.1, Parking. Thank you. Ordinance 3-25, having been read at first and now second time, is open to further amendments. All right, seeing no amendments, I'll look for a motion on Ordinance 3-25. Councilor Witham. Move for its adoption. Councilor Witham moves for the adoption of Ordinance 3-25, seconded by Councilor Pepin. Uh, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Ordinance 3-25. Discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Um, okay, so this is for the 44 spaces going towards 85 Elm Street. Um, Sign in Jen or marking, who's going to be responsible for that? Responsible, can you just clarify? I'm sorry, responsible for okay. You're going to dedicate 44 spaces. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm assuming it has to be indicated somehow that those are lease spaces versus open spaces. 
and I just wanted to clarify who would be responsible for any costs associated with that. Yes, great question. City Manager? The developer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. From other discussion? Seeing no discussion, if you are in favor of the adoption of Ordinance 3-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you are not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Charity Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. Right. Ordinance 3-25 has been adopted. Uh, brings us to resolutions. Uh, we will move past resolution 1-25 because it currently remains in committee. Which brings us to uh, resolution 5-25. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 5-25 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community project funding grant to provide final design of accessibility improvements and expansion at the Summersworth Library, which if approved uh, would allow us to enter in a grant of $500,000, uh, which does not require any city matching funds. City clerk. Resolution number 525, to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for a community project funding grant to provide final design of accessibility improvements and expansion of the Summersworth Public Library. Thank you. Resolution 5-25, having read it first and now second time, is open to further amendments. Seeing none, um, I look for a motion on resolution 5-25. Councillor Pepin? Move for his adoption. Councillor Pepin moves to the adoption of resolution 5-25, seconded by Councillor Cameron. <coughs> motion for the council is on the adoption of resolution 5-25. Discussion, Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to be clear <clears throat> that there's no city funds gonna go towards this um, resolution, correct? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Councillor Gibson. Okay. Going back to the presentation that was done earlier this year, they're talking for this renovation somewhere between six million and seven million dollars to do the work. I'm becoming uncomfortable with that number for what basically, and no, no offense when I say this, I'm just using a term, uh, hang on to an existing building that inevitably suffers from all the issues of any time you throw an addition on to something that's already existing. And given the cost of the fire station that we just constructed, it seems a little excessive in the cost estimates and I guess my question basically comes down. If we approve this grant, does it specifically have to be for the expansion or can we consider redirecting it towards new construction? City manager. It would be my understanding or position that um, we could not reallocate it. We'd have to go back and get permission. This is. Uh, uh, congressionally, um, you know, congressionally directed spending for specific purposes that are passed by the uh, by Congress. Uh, as far as the cost, this next phase will get into validating the cost or projected cost. Still recognize Councilor Gibson. Okay, I'm I'm relying on what was presented to us earlier this year, which they gave as a best estimate of what the cost could run to. And I know that's not a finite number, but again, and I've been thinking on this ever since, um, it, it just seems like we're spending a lot of, going to be spending a lot of money for an imperfect product. And again, I'm not faulting the construction or the design or anything else when I say that, but anytime you do additions to existing structure that have varying levels and, and issues, you have the potential for future problems. 
uh, Councillor Witham. Thank you. I fully support this, right? So, uh, first of all, I, I understand that we're not committing to a bond tonight to do the work. We are committing to getting the project, if you will, shovel ready. What does that help us with? Maybe there are future grant opportunities that we're not even aware of right now that by having a shovel ready project helps us with financing whatever the cost of the project would be, whether it's six million, eight million, five million. This is going to position us well. It's going to help to uh, firm up that number, uh, certainly. Uh, uh, I suppose if you don't want to spend any money on the existing building, that this isn't a resolution for you regardless. But uh, I'm a firm believer your library belongs sort of in your city center, your downtown. Um, if, if not, they are where. Um, I, I, I think where it is is a good place. I don't have the concerns of putting an addition on the building. Uh, does it have challenges? Yeah, it has all sorts of ADA challenges because of the various levels, which is in part what this money seeks to fix, um, uh, but also provides an expansion for uh, programming, uh, for collections, and all of that sort of thing. So I'm in support of this. The conversation around how we fund it when we want to build it is another one, but this positions us very well. I am not at all worried about funding this. We'll figure it out, just like we did with the fire station, just like we did with the police station, however long ago it was, just like we did with downtown improvements, replacing the Burrow Bridge, uh, and the list goes on and on. There's a way to do it if we have an appetite to do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, City yeah. Manager and then Councillor Cameron. Yeah, just... Um... I believe I reported out uh, a while back at another meeting that we applied for a $6 million grant under this congr congressional program and uh, did not, uh, were not successful. So I'm hopeful, as, as, as the council mentioned, that with, with a uh, firmer design and a firmer cost and that type of documentation, we'll go back and apply for congressional directed sp spending as so long as it continues or look for other grants, as mentioned. So thank you. Yes, and just to, to that note, the city manager and I have been meeting with various individuals from federal delegation in hopes of moving this forward. Um, Councillor Cameron. Yes, thank you, Anna. Um, this project is way overdue, and I will be in full support of it as well. And with all the new programming and things that have been going on at the library as part of our Eyes on 30 committee, looking for a central hub in the city seems like the library is turning into that and we definitely need this renovation to it thank you thank you other discussion uh parody cat and zero and then gibson uh yes i will be fully in support of accepting this free federal money to get this much needed project shovel ready as per councillor witham and i fully agree with councillor cameron thank you uh councillor gibson Okay, just to clarify one thing, I wasn't concerned about the funding aspect of it. What my concern was is relative value. And I don't have a problem with this itself, I just wanted to throw it out on the table. I understand that this is not coming out of our pocket, so I don't have a problem with the grant itself, but I would not want to be locked into something that if an alternative could come about, we could consider. I understand it making it shovel ready and so forth. It's just, as I said, my, my big question is you're spending, projected to spend between six and seven million dollars on an addition and you just built a whole new fire station with supporting systems for around 10 million. Thank you. Councillor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I mean, going to be in, <coughs> in favor of this phase, um, <clears throat> but I sometimes cringe when I hear free money. Nothing's free. You know, and I'm not going to get into it, but we've paid federal taxes. This is money that we put into it. So this is really not free money. This is the money that all of us have worked and sent to the federal government. So we're getting a little bit of our money back, so to speak. I'm in favor of this phase. Thank you. 
other discussion? Councilor Austin. Thank you. I too am in favor of this project. I think that um, what we'll get out of it is a much clearer picture of what we're looking at and what the estimated cost might be. So it's a little premature for us to be throwing around numbers that we don't really know what it is other than based on a presentation we had several months ago. Um, so I'm fully supporting this so that we can get a clearer picture of what we're looking at. Thank you. Other discussion? Captain? Yeah, I, I'd just like to talk. Um, I talked to Mr. Gibson at the last council meeting about this and around about why he asked me what I thought about, about the library. Um, I classify the law, library as, a, as something similar to Hilltop School if you're going to revamp it and stuff like that. It's, sometimes it's very difficult with the different layers and stuff like that. And it's always been a challenge with the different layers with handicapped people and even the the library function as a library at times with the different circular staircases and everything else. And when we did discuss, would it be feasible to basically cheaper probably to go brand new than it would be just to, to ref, refit something that, that basically is something like Hilltop School. Um, and I'll do favor. I would be in favor of this uh, simply because it's what we have right down there. I don't see another good place to put it in, in our community right now, uh, but I do get his point. Um, I, I'm at the point that um, sometimes you have to tear something down to make it better or whatever, and that's where I, I would lean a little bit, but at this point of the game, I can't see us doing that at, at this library right now, so I'll be in favor of this. But that's, I think that's where Mr. Gibson's coming from, and, and that's basically where I would be coming from also, is that do you get to a point that you have so many different layers and so many, it's so complicated for an architect to figure everything out to make it, and it ends up costing you more money than what it's worth. So I, I think that that's where the conversation where Mr. Gibson's coming from, and, and I, I probably stoked the, bat, the fire a little bit by what we, we talked last week uh, at the last council meeting about it, but that's, that, that's where my thoughts were from it. So I just want to explain that. Thank you. I just want to remind council, uh, this has been something we've been working on for a number of years, and this is a decision that we've decided on before in the past and a direction that we've kind of been going for a while now. So. Uh, certainly, I am. You know, we have not put a shovel on the ground, so we could change our minds at this point if we wanted to. But I think we have invested a large amount of money, received a number of grants to go this direction, and uh, if it sounds as if from discussions tonight, council is heading in that direction. Um, so I, I really don't want to get caught up in the like looking behind, and would love us to continue to look forward towards this. Other discussion. All right, seeing none. Um, Lost my train of thought. I apologize. Uh, yeah. Um, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 5 25, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. Uh, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parody Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Right. Resolution 5 25 has been adopted. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 6-25, which is to authorize the city manager to contract with Placework of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide final design services for a proposed expansion and, and accessibility improvements at the Summersworth Public Library, which, if approved, would allow us to contract with Placework for aforementioned library grant. Uh, city Clerk. Resolution number 625, to authorize the city manager to contract with Placework of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to provide final design services for a proposed expansion and accessibility improvements at the Summersworth Public Library. Thank you. Uh, resolution 6-25, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendments. All right, seeing no amendments, I will look for a motion on resolution 6-25. Councillor Parity Cotton Zero. Uh, move for its adoption. Councillor uh, Parity Cotton Zero moves for the adoption of Resolution 6 25, seconded by Councillor Pepin. Uh, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 6 25. Discussion? Seeing none, if you are in favor of the Resolution 6 25, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councillor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Right. Resolution 6 25 has been adopted. Uh, brings us to agenda item 16, which is new business. 
Uh, under ordinances, the chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on ordinance 4-25, transfer between departments for fiscal year 2024 to 2025. Uh, city clerk. Ordinance number 425, transfer between departments for fiscal year 2024-2025, September 3rd, 2024. Be it ordained by the City of Summersworth pursuant to Section 7.7D of the City Charter that the following general fund unencumbered balance transfer be made. $32,585 from capital outlay, $32,585 to elected leadership community support. This ordinance shall take effect upon passage. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Donald Austin, Kenneth Vincent. Approved City Attorney. Thank you. Ordinance 4-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until our next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will hold a public hearing. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading on Ordinance 5-25, which is a supplemental appropriation to provide funding for the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter. City Clerk. Ordinance number 525, supplemental appropriation to provide funding to the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter. September 3rd, 2024. The City of Summersworth ordains that pursuant to Section 7.7A of the City Charter, the annual budget for the City of Summersworth for fiscal year 2024-2025 is amended as follows. Appropriate $17,415 from unassigned fund balance to the community support budget as follows. Original budget, $138,495. Amendment, $17,415. Revised budget, $155,910. Approved as to funding, Scott A. Smith, Director of Finance and Administration, recorded by Kristen LePan, City Clerk. Background. This ordinance appropriates the funding that will be included with funding from the American Rescue Plan Act funds that was previously allocated to two capital projects as contingency that was not used and is no longer encumbered. The total funding allocated to, this, to the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County for the Home for Now Shelter is $50,000. This ordinance requires a public hearing and requires a two-thirds majority vote of the City Council after the public hearing subject to Section 7.4.1 in Section 7.7A of the City Charter. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Donald Austin, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you, sorry for almost cutting you off yeah. there. <laughs> uh, Ordinance 5-25, having been read a first time, will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting, at which time we will hold a public hearing. Uh, brings us to resolutions in our new business. Uh, chair recognizes the clerk for our first reading on resolution 10-25, a vote to support a one-time funding request of the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter using a combination of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and unassigned fund balance. City Clerk. Resolution number 1025, a vote to support a one-time funding request of the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now Shelter using a combination of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and unassigned fund balance. September 3rd, 2024. Whereas the Community Action Partnership of Stratford, Stratford County, CAP SC, has taken ownership of and responsibility to operate the Home for Now Shelter located in Rochester, New Hampshire. And whereas CAP SC met with the Finance Committee and informed them that due to the timing of the transition of ownership of the shelter, they were una unable to seek any federal and state assistance and therefore are requesting assistance from the cities of Summersworth, Rochester, and Dover, as well as other Stratford County communities in the form of a one-time funding request to operate the shelter this year. And whereas the amount of the request from the city of Summersworth is $50,000. And whereas the Finance Committee supports this funding request by transferring $32,585 of American Rescue Plan Act funds previously appropriated as contingency for other projects that is no longer needed for those projects and remain unencumbered. And whereas the Finance Committee supports funding the balance needed in the amount of $17,415 17, by using unassigned fund balance. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Summersworth that the City of Summersworth supports a one-time funding request of the Community Action Partnership of Stratford County to assist in the operation of the Home for Now shelter in the amount of $50,000 using a combination of funding from the American Rescue Plan Act and unassigned fund, fund balance. Sponsored by Councilors David A. Witham, Donald Austin, Kenneth Vincent, approved City Attorney. Thank you. 
um, resolution 10-25 haven't been read at first time will remain in first reading until the next regularly scheduled meeting your honor yes I'd like That's to move that council rules be suspended to have resolutions 11-25 12-25 read by title only and to allow for their second reading this evening All right. is there a second motion before it is to suspend rules for 11-25 12-25 to be read by title only and to allow for their second reading seconded by Councillor Parity Cat and Zero if you are uh, or I should open up to discussion I apologize discussion All right, seeing none if you are in favor of the motion you will state by saying yes you are opposed you'll state by saying no all those in favor aye. 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 all those opposed all right eyes have it um, uh, rules are suspended uh, to allow for a second reading, excuse me, yeah, second reading and uh, title only. You threw me off with that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> All right. Uh, chair will recognize the clerk for a first reading on resolution 11-25 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety for a traffic enforcement patrols grant by title only. Resolution number 1125 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety for a traffic enforcement patrols grant. Thank you. And uh, the chair recognizes the clerk for a second reading on resolution 11 25. Resolution number 1125 to authorize the city manager to enter into a grant agreement with the New Hampshire Office of Highway Safety for a traffic enforcement patrols grant. All right. Resolution 11 25 having been read for a first and second time is now open to amendment. Seeing no amendment, uh, Chair looks for a motion on resolution 12 or 11 25, excuse me. Yes, Councillor Witham. Move for its adoption. Uh, Councillor Witham moves the adoption of resolution 11 25, seconded by Councillor Austin. Um, discussion. Yes, Councillor Witham. You know, the timing of this couldn't be better, but it couldn't be worse. Um, as we all know, New Hampshire has seen a sharp rise in highway fatalities this year. Um, certainly some of it can be attributed to the things that uh, these grant patrols will target, such as distracted driving, uh, driving under the influence, uh, aggressive driving, all of those sorts of things. So it's our little part, but glad that we can do it. Thank you. Other discussion? Yes, Councilor Gibson. Um, I agree with Councilor Woodham. Rare may it be. Um, we definitely need it. I just had a prime example of that today. Coming up High Street, a guy came out of the parking lot for the Mexican restaurant um, down by Tri City Plaza, crossed those two lanes, crossed the two lanes on the other side. And then, as I'm driving past him, decides to weave back into the lane I'm in and almost catches my front end. Um, I don't know what is wrong with people. <laughs> it seems like somebody's putting crazy on the loose in the world, and we need as much enforcement as possible. Um, I, I drive part-time as a gig driver, and I've just seen some stuff that's just totally unbelievable to me, and I'd like to see stop. And I hope that as part of this, and I'm not trying to put an extra load on the PD, but somebody needs to explain to people that electric bikes and electric scooters are not pedestrians. They are, depending on what class they are, they are considered vehicles. And yet, they act like they have the same rights and privileges as pedestrians. And I'm just shocked that there hasn't been more accidents with those. So I'm all in favor of this. Thank you. Other discussion? All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of resolution 11 25, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Cotton Zero? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Resolution 11 25 has been adopted. 
Chair recognizes the clerk for a first reading by title only on resolution 12-25 to add the childhood cancer awareness flag to the annual flagpole display schedule at Citizens Place. Resolution number 1225, to add the childhood cancer awareness flag to the annual flagpole displays schedule at Citizens Place. Thank you. Resolution 12-25, having read a first time, is now ready for a second reading. City Clerk, would you mind doing a second reading on resolution 12-25? Resolution number 1225, to add the childhood cancer awareness flag to the annual flagpole displays schedule at Citizens Place. Thank you. Resolution 12-25, having been read a first and now second time, is open to further amendment. Seeing no amendment. Uh, Chair looks for a motion on Resolution 12-25. Councilor Austin. I'll move for its adoption. Councilor Austin moves to the adoption of Resolution 12-25, seconded by Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Um, motion for the Council is on the adoption of Resolution 12-25. Discussion? Seeing none, if you're in favor of the adoption of Resolution 12-25, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Austin. Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. All right. Resolution 12-25 <coughs> has been adopted. Thank you, everybody. All right. Uh, that brings us to other. Uh, tonight, other under <coughs> we first have a council vote uh, to grant an extension through November 30th, 2025 for the previously approved city ordinance chapter 31. Community Re Revitalization Tax Relief Incentive Program Project at 144 to one, uh, my number's wrong, what is it, 144 to 145? 42, 42 to 44, thank you. High Street owned by Jeffrey Hughes. Uh, what are the wishes of the council? Councilor Witham. Move that we grant the extension. Uh, Councilor Witham moves to grant the extension, Second. seconded by Councilor Gib uh, Goodwin, excuse me. Um, motion for the council is to grant the extension for chapter 31 uh, to 142 to 144 High Street, owned by Jeffrey Hughes. Discussion? All right, seeing none, if you're in favor of granting the extension, you'll state by saying yes. If you're not, you'll state by saying no. City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham? Yes. Goodwin? Yes. Cameron? Yes. Austin? Yes. Pepin? Yes. Vincent? Yes. Gibson? Yes. Parity Catanzaro? Yes. Misho? Yes. All right, extension is granted. Uh, next up, we have a council vote to terminate the previously approved city ordinance chapter 31, community revitalization, excuse me, revitalization, that word is getting harder the longer this meeting goes, uh, tax relief incentive program project at 25 High Street owned by David M. H. Baker, some downtown LLC. What are the wishes of the council? Council with them. Yes, I move that the uh, council revoke the uh, agreement Councilor Witham uh, moves to noted property. Sorry, sorry, to revoke uh, the agreement uh, for 25 High Street, seconded by Councilor Cameron. Uh, motion for the council is to revoke the Chapter 31 Community Revitalization Tax Relief Program for 25 High Street, owned by David M. H. Baker. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, if you are in favor of the revocation or revocation. Revocation. Yeah, revocation. That's that's a good word. Um, you will state by saying yes. If you are not, you will state by saying no. Is that clear? So to revoke is a yes. Um, City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Councilor Witham. Yes. Goodwin. Yes. Cameron. Yes. Austin. Yes. Pepin. Yes. Vincent. Yes. Gibson. Yes. Parity Catanzaro. Yes. Misho. Yes. All right. The tax relief incentive program is revoked. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have comments by visitors. Uh, Summersworth City Council and Mayor's Office welcome all visitors and encourage you to voice your opinions and views at council meetings. In accordance with Council Rule 7-C, time limit of five minutes per person shall be in effect unless the council wishes to suspend the rules. Speakers shall not enter into a debate with any persons, the mayor, council members, city manager, or department heads. Is there anyone who wishes to speak tonight? Thank you, if you wouldn't mind stating your name and the ward in which you live. Hi, my name is Richard Brooks. I live at 18 Linden Street, Ward 1. Um, the topic of uh, appointments to boards and committees and so on, I'd also like to mention that the elected officials that you appointed a couple here tonight, uh, it'd be great to get them more recognition. Put their names, maybe their faces out on the website, make people aware that these positions exist, and not just the day that you come in and vote, because I've 
helped out with the elections for over 10 years now, I believe. I've been moderator, never in my own ward because it's always been shorthanded. And I just get appointed to do all the ones, fill in wherever I can, and it's just there's never enough help. And I think just getting that out there, you know, obviously we have vacant positions probably still, but, you know, make, make it a known thing. It's an elected position just like city council and school board. Why not make it a more prominent feature on website channel 22 or whatever we can do to get the rec recognition out there and uh, as far as driving goes and <laughs> I got back into towing recently you can't imagine sitting up in a truck how many people I see texting it's over half the people driving it's scary out there you don't even want to stand on the side of the highway trust me thank you others are wishing to speak this evening Thank you so much. Again, if you wouldn't mind saying your name and the ward in which you live. Thank you, Laura Berry, Ward 4. I just wanted to restate um, that we are having elections on September 10th, next Tuesday. I really want to encourage all of our city residents to come out and vote. It's very important, especially at a local election. I am a little biased. I am running for a position for city at large. I know others are also doing that, and I'm sure they would very much appreciate people coming out and putting their opinions out there and voting. It's just very important, especially at the local level. So please do so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, others wishing to speak this evening? See any more? So we'll move on to agenda item 18, which is closing comments by counselors. I've been realizing I haven't like been rotating who I give first closing comments to I like rotate everything else I like have like a whole system so I'm gonna start doing it with closing comments uh, Councillor Witham you went first last time if I remember correctly so that means it's Councillor Goodwin's turn time to go first sorry <laughs> I'm feeling merciless no comments all right all right <laughs> Councillor Cameron thank you Yvonne. the only thing I have to say tonight is don't trash Summersworth is September 21st I will not be here, so my co-chair, Jason Barry, will be running it. I'll be in the Outer Banks, and I hope to have a successful Don't Trust Summersworth. We are meeting at Lilac Lane by the police station and doing Blackwater Road. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great trip, too. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, Councilor Austin, you're next. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, a couple of things this evening. I do want to uh, reiterate both what you said and what uh, Ms. Barry said about the upcoming election. I think that it's really important. Uh, you know, everybody knows that the it's a state primary, but here in Summers Earth, we have an opportunity to have some local candidates elected too. So uh, please come out and vote, make your voices heard. Uh, it's one of the most fundamental rights and obligations we have in this country to vote. So I encourage you all to do that. And I wanna say welcome back to all of the students and staff to our schools. Uh, schools are now open. Please drive carefully. Um, it, it's very important all the time, but particularly now that school's open. Um, I know where I live, right near Idlehurst School, every day there's something that could happen there. Drivers are kind of nuts so when school's coming in and out of session. So please be careful when you're driving. Um, but to all the students and staff, welcome back. We hope you have a great year. Thank you. Councilor Pepin. I have nothing this evening. All right. Thank you. Councilor Vincent. Thank you, Your Honor. I have nothing. All right. Thank you. Councilor Gibson. I'll follow a trend. Nothing. All right. Thank you so much. And Councilor Parity Catanzaro. Thank you. Um, we have a communications and community outreach committee meeting happening next week. Um, typically, we go at 6 p.m. right before the school board meeting. We are following that trend. It's usually on a Tuesday, but because of the elections, it's on a Monday. So this Monday at 6 p.m., communications and community outreach. Um, we will be talking, among other things, about a better way to notify people about public comments, which is something that has been brought up multiple times, including at this most recent school board. Um, as some of you may know and some of you may not, um, my father passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, his last and uh, most important wish was that more people listen to his music. So a shameless plug, go to jimdangermusic.com and you can find uh, a lot of his music that was uploaded in the last couple of weeks. Uh, search Jim Danger anywhere you can stream music. We've gotten a lot 
uh, from the last 40 years up online and hopefully he will get some new fans. Um, he was a big fan also of making your voice heard, so please do get out and vote. There's a lot of very um, qualified people on the ballot. I want to read uh, part of a Foster's article from a couple of weeks ago about one of them. Uh, Laura Berry, the current chair of the Historic District Commission, also ran for city council in the last election. Berry, originally from Montana, moved here 10 years ago. I married Jason Berry and moved into the Berry family, she said. They own the GE plant and have been a big part of Summersworth's history. My husband wanted to come back home and I came with him. I liked it here and decided to put down roots. Barry has a master's degree in historic preservation, has been on the Historic District Commission for about eight years. She's the current chair. Barry says she enjoys interacting with people and it's one of the reasons she decided to run again for the at-large seat. I have heard people say they want to see new faces on the council, she said. I think I can be good there. I want to help guide the city's growth. I know housing is a big issue, but I want to make sure it's done correctly. I do not want to see a Band-Aid approach. I believe people want to be heard, and I'm not sure they feel they are right now. Uh, so please get out and vote. Uh, vote for people who share your values, and thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, before you yes. proceed. Point of order, Your Honor. Yes. We have a council rule that prohibits statements like that. Can I say something? So thank you all for your concerns. I was actually flagged and asked about this this evening. I looked at the rule, and the rule is you cannot support yourself Self. okay she is allowed to do this for another individual that is the rule thank you your honor yes. thank you thank you um council Mishu. nothing this evening thank you all right that brings us to oh oh yeah see this is why <laughs> this is why the rotation's hard oh i'm so used to the rotation i'm so sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> I had nothing, but now I have I knew a I was going to do that, too. I knew it. Uh, Councilor Witham, you're up. I'm so Thank sorry. You, uh, no worries. Uh, I'm just hiding over here. Um, uh, two things. They're both code-related. I, I know that city staff, code staff, as they're out and about in the community, will sometimes look for uh, signs that are in violation of our sign ordinance. And examples are, I can pressure wash your house. I can roof your house. I can... Uh, there are a lot of them out there right now. If it, uh, I bet you code can find a hundred without trying, right? There's that many. Uh, any significant intersection, uh, the Walmart lights, the Target lights, the uh, Market Basket lights, uh, Rocky Hill Road, uh, the list goes on. Every street has them. So maybe we can make a more concerted effort, not just an occasional drive-by. It's, it's a lot of litter right now. Um, and the other is a code issue. Um, and uh, it's related to dumpsters. I know we have an ordinance that requires them to be screened and on a pad and all of those sorts of things. Um, the, the worst violator, in my opinion, is Walmart. Uh, maybe it's not the store itself, but it's the gas station. And it's one that annoys me because they actually came in front of the planning board asking for permission to remove the dumpster. It was sort of an odd planning board request asking to take away something. Uh, and so they took down the, the screening, they took down the pad, and now magically after they take all of that stuff down, the dumpster reappears. Mind you, we have the absolute worst looking Walmart in the continental United States. There isn't another one that looks as bad as this one. And now they aggravate it with the dumpster. You can't tell that I get annoyed about the Walmart here in Summersworth. I don't think it's a corporate trend. I think it's local management. They're not very good there. The store is terrible. If we could at least enforce the dumpster issue there, uh, that might get them started. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we are officially got every counselor. You know, I'm sorry I almost forgot you. This is, I'm just going to have to remember now with my new rotation. Maybe I just scrapped the rotation. <laughs> All right. That brings us to item 19, which is future agenda items. Are there any agenda items for a future meeting? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, number 20 is non-public session. We have none. Last is adjournment. Uh, who wants to adjourn? All right, we got a motion to adjourn from Council Cameron, seconded by Councilor Vincent. Question for the Council is adjournment. If you're in favor, please say it by saying aye. If you're opposed, say it by aye. saying nay. Aye.
<laughs> Whoa, we got one nay, but I think the eyes have it. We are adjourned. <laughs>